Hey, I'm Katie with REI. Welcome to winter where hiking turns to snowshoeing. Comfort and warmth are the name of the game, so let's talk about what to wear. The number one rule is layers. We like layers because when you have multiple articles of clothing instead of one giant coat, you can add or subtract different pieces of clothing to fine tune the temperature for what you need and the, what the conditions look like. To be even more specific, we like non-cotton layers. Out in the backcountry, staying warm is staying dry. When cotton gets wet, it stays wet and you get cold. Wool and synthetic layers not only dry faster, they'll keep you warm even when they are wet. So, there are three layers to think about when we're layering. First up is your base layer. This is the fabric that's right next to your skin, so tops and bottoms. The base layer is important for wicking moisture away from your body, as well as keeping a layer of warm air right next to you to keep you nice and toasty. Um, base layers, base layer tops, come in usually two options. You can get the crew neck type that I have here, or you can get it in quarter zip. There's just a zipper that goes part way down the base layer. Some people like quarter zip because it allows you to vent temperature when you're getting warm, working really hard out there. For me, I like to vent with some of my other layers, so I keep it simple with a crew neck top. Next up, we have our mid layers. Mid layers can be anything from a fleece, like this one, mine has a zip, to a puffy jacket or sometimes both. Depending on the conditions, your mid layer may actually be several mid layers. You can wear a fleece underneath your puffy to boost the temperature when it's really, really cold outside. On the flip side, if conditions are good, you may not wear a mid layer at all. You can go straight from your base layer to your outer layer and just have the mid layer in your pack in case the weather conditions turn. I, in particular, like to use a vest as my mid layer. So this is great for keeping your core temperature warm, but not having too many layers on your arms so it's a little bit easier to move around when you're hiking around on your snowshoes. And lastly, we have the outer layer. This is usually a windproof, waterproof, breathable layer uh, that you can wear to keep the elements out from all of the other insulation you have going on. Breathable is important with the outer layer so that you don't turn into your own personal sauna when you're out there snowshoeing. It's hard work. Uh, you can get anything from a super minimalist, no pockets, just a thin layer to keep the wind and the water out, or you can get one with a couple of extra features. This jacket I really like because it has something called pit zips. So this zipper in the armpit, underside of the arm, opens up straight to the inside of the jacket. It's great for when the weather is still bad enough that you want to be wearing an outer layer, maybe to keep the rain or the snow out, but you're generating a lot of heat with your body, so you want to be able to vent that. And again not be your own personal sauna while you're out snowshoeing. So these three layers apply to tops as well as bottoms. It's less common to wear mid layers for your pants. A lot of people just go straight from base layer to shell, but when the conditions are really bad, you may wear a soft shell or you may wear fleece pants as your mid layer in between those. When the conditions are really good, you may just go straight to hiking tights or hiking pants. These are my tights that I wear. Um, but as always, make sure you have your other layers with you in your pack so that you can put them on should the weather change. Next up, we have accessories. So we've got hats, gloves, buffs, gaiters, and of course, shoes. Let's talk about hats first. Fuzzy hats are always a good idea when you're snowshoeing because it does get cold out there. But keep in mind that you are generating a lot of heat as you hike. I like to carry a ball cap because in addition to being chilly, uh, it's also bright out there with the snow everywhere. And sometimes this is nice to keep the sun out of your eyes. Okay, gloves, next up. Uh, you can wear either gloves or mittens. Miranda has a great video talking about the differences between those two. For me, I prefer gloves. Uh, I like being able to fidget around and mess with the buckles on my snowshoes and gloves just give me a little bit more dexterity for that. Either way, I like to also have a pair of liners because when the conditions are really good, you can just go straight down to the liners and then keep the gloves in your backpack for when it gets cold again. Next up, we have buffs. I carry buffs pretty much everywhere I go, not only because they come in a rainbow of colors, but also because this is a nice thin layer that you can have for that transition between the top of your jacket and your hat. If the conditions get really bad, you can also have a fuzzy neck gaiter to wear either with or instead of your buff, layering rules still apply. 
Next up, we have gaiters. So you can get full height gaiters like these. They come up to just below your knees or ones that are a little bit shorter, just enough to cover the top of your boot. Either way, when you're snowshoeing, the tails of your snowshoes can often fling snow up into the air and gaiters are a really good way to keep that snow out from inside your boots. Speaking of boots, we have footwear here. I have my insulated snow boots. These are great. They've got a little bit extra warmth because my feet tend to get cold. But depending on your conditions, you could also rock a pair of waterproof boots. That would also be good. One thing to point out is on the insulated boots, you'll notice that a lot of them have a tiny little hook right on top of the toe box of your boot. That hook is actually for the gaiters. It allows your gaiters to hook onto the boot and create a better seal. Last bit here is socks. So cotton is rotten. We still want wool and synthetic fabrics when it comes to socks so that you can keep your feet warm even if you get a little bit of wet feet when you're out hiking in the snow. So I like to carry an extra pair of socks for the luxury and also because if your socks get soaked, it's really nice to have a dry pair in your pack. That's about it. If you're interested in more of the gear you need snowshoeing, uh, go check out my video on what I bring on a snowshoe day hike. Otherwise, go talk to the experts at your local REI and we'll see you next time.